Hey everyone, this is Patricia here, and welcome to Turtle Talk, where we have all turtles all the time. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Ninja Turtles related. Movies, TV shows, video games, toys, the works. So grab your pizzas, grab your size, and grab your katanas, and sit back and relax as we talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Brought to you by OldSchoolLane.Blogspot.com and ManicExpression.com. Well, you knew that this was coming. We decided to skip off the TMNT Michael Bay news due to the fact that we were interviewing Renee Jacobs. And trust me, I don't want anything to be soiled when it comes to the interview with Renee Jacobs by this garbage. But since this is a regular episode of Turtle Talk, I decided why not to do it here. So, here we go. Now, it has been noted over the past couple of weeks of some people who are going to be in this movie. Well, uh, it turns out that Whoopi Goldberg, surprisingly, is going to be in this movie. And she is going to be playing a female version of Bern Thompson, known as Bernadette Thompson. Now, as you probably know, Bern Thompson was actually the main editor in charge of the news building that April O'Neil works at. And she w- and he was supposed to have a huge hatred towards the Turtles, kind of like similar of, jo- of J. Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man. So, we'll see. I mean, this could be kind of interesting, given the fact that, you know, this is a very rare opportunity that Michael Bay would actually have a change in the character. That's actually kind of interesting. I mean, first of all, we have a change from a white man to a black woman. And also, I like Whoopi Goldberg, so maybe this will be kind of interesting. But the one thing that I am so absolutely pissed of is William Fitchner as the Shredder. Now, don't get me wrong. I like William Fitchner. He was an amazing antagonist in Prison Break. But seriously, Shredder? Shredder is supposed to be Japanese. And from the last time I checked, William Fitchner is white. Okay. Uh, next up, we did find out early on that Will Arnett is going to be playing as Vernon Fenwick. And also, we've heard some information regarding about a couple of other people who are going to be in the movie. Like, Abby Elliott from SNL is going to be having a small little role. And surprisingly, believe it or not, Kevin Eastman is going to be having a cameo in this movie. No, Kevin Eastman, no! Go, go away! You don't want to be associated with this shit! I mean, you were on the San Diego Comic-Con panel. You were praising how the 2012 iteration of Ninja Turtles was the best iteration ever. Why are you coming into what may be the worst iteration of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies? Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so back, back to Finchner. Here, get this. The Shredder is not going to be called Orokusaki. It's going to be Eric Sox. Really? You're going to Americanize this movie? First of all, Splinter and Shredder are named Hamato Yoshi and Orokusaki, respectively. And you're going to make it Americanized by having Danny Woodburn and William Fitchner in this movie. Fuck you, Michael Bay. You're going to shit all over this movie just like you did with the Transformers movies. I have no idea how he's able to do this, but you know what? Whatever. So yeah, uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to the movie. So, alright, so now we can get to the latest news from San Diego Comic Con and Kevin and I opinion of the season finale of Ninja Turtles and what we can be expecting from season two. So... Here you go. Enjoy! Welcome aboard to this week's episode of Turtle Talk, where there's all turtles all the time. As usual, I am Patricia. And I am Kevin. And today, we're going to be discussing a lot of things regarding about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, The major things we're going to be discussing about is the last episode of the first season of TMNT on Nickelodeon, and all the new information about Season 2, as well as the new mutants that were discussed on San Diego Comic-Con. So, let's start off with the season finale known as Showdown. Kevin, what do you have to say about it? I, think it, I thought it was a really great two-part episode that definitely, you know, 
I, I thought it was it, it was very good how it answered a lot of questions and how it sort of ended the first season. Um, you know, I felt like season one was like a comic book in a sense because in every episode there were it had that you know that um, not that CGI, but you know how they have like a, a, a still like you know a drawing like of a comic at every episode. So I felt like it was like the end of a comic book and the start of a new one. Uh, uh, the fighting sequences between Shredder and Splinter were awesome, and I really got a kick out of Roseanne playing Crank Prime. I know that Roseanne was was was, was uh, tapped to play uh, a female Crank on the show, and I was really happy that they were able to get her. I mean, um, I love Roseanne. I, I love the show Roseanne. I like, like Roseanne Barr. I think she's very funny. And I think she, I mean, you know, she's not comedic in here, in, here in the sense it's a very, you know, she plays, you know, the prank prime is this, like, you know, is, is evil and stuff, but I think she did a really good job. I mean, you know, I know there's people out there who wanted to see the crane and wanted to see him and his android body, but, I, you know, I mean, this is a new show for, you know, with the new incarnation, and we have to accept it. I mean, you know, well, we don't have to accept it, but I know there's things that people aren't going to like and are going to like. And I thought that they, they did a really good job of bringing this new villainous to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I like uh, the Technodrome. That definitely was a modern version of it. I like how they made it sort of like a spaceship as opposed to that giant ball with the eye on top. I mean, I love the original Technodrome. Don't get me wrong. It's a, you know, I grew up with the original Technodrome and I always thought it was cool when they sort of gave the, the eye like an evil look. But this new Technodrome was very, very... It wasn't scary, but I think, like, it, it was like, what if there was, like, the Technodrome was real? So they gave it, like, this, like, spaceship. And there was that guy that said the Earth is coming, the Earth is, the Earth is, or the world is going to end, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, I'm glad that Kirby, uh, April's father, wasn't a villain. Um, not only because... I feel bad for April. I didn't want her to have not a mother and not a father. So I'm glad that he was able to get that device. I couldn't understand why the Mousers were there, though, because Baxter Stockman went AWOL in Baxter's Gambit. Uh, he vowed his revenge on both Dog Pound, Fishface, and, and the Ninja Turtles. So I was curious to know how they got Mousers when uh, I didn't see Dog Pound pick up any of the Mousers in Baxter's Gambit. And, and, um, and, 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 you know, I, I don't remember the Mount, uh, Shredder having any connections with the Mouser, so I don't know how they were there. But, you know, um, regardless, it wasn't a big thing for me. Uh, I also liked, um, I'm glad that, that Dog Pound and Fish Face were there. Uh, I was getting a little worried that they weren't going to be in this episode. Um, I love how Dog Pound gave this very dark narration of why Splinter and Shredder don't talk to one another. And it was great to see Splinter in action. You know, Splinter, you know, he has been in action in, in, the, in, the, in the 1987 series and 2003 series. So it was great to see him finally kick butt, you know, um, and not just be on the sidelines. Um, I also thought that the... Um, Karai. I love this Karai. I really, really do. And I was never a fan of, like, the old Karai of the 2003 series, even in, in the, the movie TMNT. But Kelly, who does such an awesome job, and just the character itself, is, she's such a badass. And it's so sad how Shredder brainwashed her. And we finally saw Shredder without his helmet. It was so cool. So I thought that was really, really great. Well, um, I definitely agree with what you said. And um, I gotta say one thing to you, Kevin. What's that? I told you so. I told you so. I think you and everybody else who watched the show knew that Karai was Splinter's daughter. Shut up and let me get my moment. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, we all kind of knew that, but still, I mean, that was a really good way... To kind of show that Karai is not just going to be the same Karai that we saw in the 2003 TMNT. And I really like the fight between Shredder and Splinter. I kept thinking to myself every time I saw this, it, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is how the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie should have been. 
in which you had the fight between Shredder and Splinter. And it lasted for a good chunk of the time, to tell you the truth. It didn't, it wasn't like three seconds in which Splinter just pulled out his staff and then Shredder just fell off the building and then went into went inside the garbage truck and then was crushed. I mean, this was actually quite satisfying. Yeah, it definitely was. Definitely ended the series, you know, I'm, I, and especially looking at season two. They had a trailer for season two. It looks really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. And I'm really, really glad that it's able to fit in a whole bunch of great humor into it as well. When they get inside the Technodrome and it's and it's and it doesn't have gravity and they were able to not be able to go around it at first and then you had Mikey saying, Oh well, I'm gonna throw up or throw down or throw sideways but whatever it is I'm gonna throw up or something like that. That was funny. Yeah, that was funny. And I was quite surprised about Roseanne playing Krang. I mean, I thought it was just going to be her, like, nasally voice. It's like, nah, nah, like, you know, that kind of thing. But no, I mean, it, it actually was really good. And she sounded kind of scary, to tell you the truth. Really? Oh, yeah. She's definitely an inch. She definitely is a versatile actress, I'll tell you that. I know. It, it was really, really awesome. And also, um, another thing that we needed to talk about, um, you know, right before we get on to the next topic, I really like the, uh, there are a couple of things that kind of irked me a little bit, like, like in the scene, like when we see the, um, the mind control device on Kirby's neck, and I was thinking to myself, seriously, nobody saw that, not even Splinter saw the, a little tiny device that is being controlled on Kirby's neck. And then, and then by 30 minutes into the two-parter, they finally recognize and they pulled it out. And, you know, I, so I was like, you know, they, they definitely could have recognized that a lot sooner. I have mixed feelings about the dancing scene at the end of the series, uh, the season. Oh, come on. This I gotta hear. Um, for a show that has a great mixture of campy, but at the same time dark and serious... Ending it with that dance, it, it kind of almost reminded me of the end of the second Turtles movie, The Secret of the Ooze, but with no vanilla ice, which, thank God, but still, with the tone that the series has gotten to, it kind of felt out of place for me. I'm sorry, it really did feel out of place for me. I mean, I, I was thinking to myself, oh, uh, they're ending it with a dancing scene. I mean, if it would have been, like, for a few seconds, that would have been funny. Like, maybe Mikey would have, you know, started it with, you know, him playing the record player, and then everybody is just looking at him funny, and then Mikey stops. Uh, and then we would have cut into the end where, when you see the Technodrome under the water, and then... It starts lighting up again, which means that, oh no, things are going to go down. But no, everybody starts dancing. And I was like, okay, where did this come from? So what do you think about season two so far? Ah, season two. Now, we're going to get into that uh, right now because, as you know, we actually got a glimpse of the season of what season two is going to be in the San Diego Comic-Con trailer. Um, what it, what we've got so far of what's going to be uh, uh, going on for season two is that you see the four turtles inside of a spaceship. There's a whole bunch of mutagen. And by accident, the mutagen is being dropped all over New York City. And a lot of people are turning into mutants. So we get an introduction of some of the mutants that are going to be introduced in the show. The first one that I'm sure a lot of people know about is the Neutralizer. Now, Patty, let me ask you a question. Did, when you saw these mutants, were they uh, animated or were they just photos? They were just drawings, and some of them were eventually, um, you know, colored in. But as for animated, no. They were not animated, they were just drawings. Uh, if you saw on San Diego Comic-Con, um, there was a, a video on YouTube if you want to check that out. What we got was a look of four mutants so far. Um, one of them is, as I mentioned before, the Neutralizer. The Neutralizer is looks it is basically a a newt that was uh, that had a lot of mutagen inside of it, and it looks really cool and is being voiced by Danny Trejo of all people. Wow. 
Well, the next mutant that we have is Slash. Now, Slash is another mutant, and I'm sure that some people may be associated with Slash. And Slash is actually Spike, which was Raph's pet turtle. And he is going to be kind of known as the fifth turtle in the group. We don't know if he's going to be like a major part in the group, but we do know that he's going to play a good part in the in the second season. And he's going to be voiced by Corey Feldman. Yeah, it should also be mentioned that Slash was a villain in the past Ninja Turtle incarnation. So uh, it's not revealed yet if Slash is going to go rogue or is it going to be, a, a, you know, one that on the turtle side, but, you know, a lot of fans have mixed reactions of uh, Slash being a good guy in this incarnation, you know? Yeah, I think another reason why people have mixed reactions about Slash as well is because the last time that they introduced a fifth turtle to join in the group, it didn't exactly turn out very well. Anywho. So, yeah, um, Corey Feldman has had um, a lot of history with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as you know, he was the voice of Donatello in the first movie and in the third movie. So it's nice to see him going back to Turtles again. Now, the third mutant that was introduced in the series was an owl kind of creature known as Sir Malachi. And this was a mutant that when I saw this for the first time, I thought, wow, this looks cool. This looks like something that came out of Avatar The Last Airbender. You know that episode in which you see the owl spirit in the library? It looked awesome with the cane. and it, I, I, I'm going to be really excited about this one. There's no mention of who's going to voice Mal, uh, Sir, uh, Sir Malachi, but I'm looking forward to this one. Okay. And then there's the fourth and final mutant that was uh, introduced, uh, the new one. Uh, the fourth and final new mutant was a very unusual one. I don't know whether I can call it weird or cute, but I I, I don't know, but it, I, I saw it once, uh, you know, when they were showing the preview of the second season, and it was known as simply Ice Cream Kitty. And um, of course, uh, there's another one that I do need to mention, because when I told this to Kevin, he merely shit his pants. Um, and that is that Baxter Stockman is going back to his original fly form. Simply known as Baxter the Fly. Yeah, I saw a picture of Ice Cream Kitty, and it looks really weird. Yeah, I know! It looks ridiculous! I just hope that it's a minor character. Yeah, and so does Sir Malachi look really weird, too. I like the look of Sir Malachi. Me too. Now, uh, what do you think of um, Baxter turning back into a fly? Oh, I absolutely love it. I'm glad he's going back as a fly. You know, definitely, it's going to... I mean... You know, I really like how they're going with this direction. I really want to see how he gets mutated into a fly. I wonder if they're going to, um, uh, if they're going to turn, if they if how he's going to turn into a fly. Yeah, um, that's going to be interesting because if you remember from the original, it, he basically was inside of a machine and there was a fly a inside. Disintegrating of, unit. Yeah, disintegrating unit, and. Um, a fly went in there, and so he was able to survive by having the fly and him merge together, similar to the, um, I think it was the 80s remake of the fly? 1958 fly. Okay, the 1958 fly, okay. So yeah, I knew that, you know, Kevin was going to be really excited about that one. Definitely. I'm just curious how they're going to get Ice Cream Kitty. I'm looking at the photo right now, and basically it's just a kid with ice cream. I don't even know how the heck that's going to look. The one, yeah, Ice Cream Kitty I can understand, but the one that I'm kind of iffy about is Squirrelanoid. Why do you know it was Squirrelanoid? Because he looks like the alien? Yeah, I mean, I can understand. I, 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 according to what they said, Squirrelanoid is supposed to be one of the first who gets touched with the mutagen, but I don't know. I mean, when I saw Sir Malachi and Tiger Claw, those really got me interested. Squirrelanoid and Ice Cream Kitty... Eh, not really. But yeah, um, speaking of uh, Baxter the Fly, I was really surprised that they decided to go with the fly form because, as you recall from the 2003 series, they did not turn him into a fly. Instead, he was kind of like, um, he, he was like a robot, and he slowly lost his body parts. And That was because it was based on the, on the comic books. Yeah. The 2003 series, even though it was by four kids' entertainment, 
they really wanted that series to be a modern take of the original comics. So they didn't have the, so the mutagen really didn't play a huge part. And they really tried to create the characters, with the exception of a few characters that they made especially for the show, they wanted the series to really be based off the Mirage comics from the 1980s. So you really didn't get to see, like, that's why Rocksteady and Bebop wasn't there. Instead of the instead of Crane, there was the Ultrams, uh, you know, uh, the Rat King. Um, you, know, he, he, you know, he had sort of like, you know, he was looked like more like the comic book character. Baxter was black. Yeah, I, I can understand what you're saying. And then, of course, um, one of the best highlights of the entire panel was when Kevin Eastman stood up and he said that this is the best incarnation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles he's ever seen animated. And I was surprised because I would think that it would have been the 2003 series because it stuck closer to the comic books. But to see him say that, it was quite shocking. And the, everybody was applauding. Like, it was, it, he had a standing ovation. It was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. And what, um, and what about um, Peter Lord? What did he have to say? Uh, Peter Lord was not in the panel. Well, what did he say? Is there any interviews with him or anything? Not that I know of. Yeah, but I'm, I'm telling you, it was it was really cool. I, I love the panel. One of my favorite panels that happened in San Diego Comic Con, next to Legend of Korra and the Marvel panel that revealed Guardians of the Galaxy and a lot of things. It, it was really really cool. Um, another thing that we want to mention about San Diego Comic Con was that it revealed some of the toys that were going to be featured in the in, in the in the following months. Uh, did you see that, Kevin? I saw that. I have a bit of a mixed reaction to the toys. I'm definitely a little upset that Playmates is, um, you know, um, re-releasing the 1988 Turtle toys again um, as part of the classic collection, only because they already released them for the 25th anniversary. And I was kind of hoping we were going to see classic collection version of... Um, of like April and Splinter and Shredder and Crane and Casey Jones, but uh, you know I'm a little upset that they're gonna do that and and that the to and the turtle van goes for like seventy nine dollars, fifty some more dollars. It was it was insane, and um, you know uh, the movie star turtles are going to be part of the classic collection, the nineteen ninety uh, Ninja Turtles. And the only thing I'm looking forward to is the 2012 Ninja Turtle figure, figures, you know? Yeah, I'm looking forward to those, too. When I saw the panel that was describing about the toys, it looked pretty interesting. I mean, you know, they're the typical toys that you would expect. And I know that they're definitely pushing the new mutants that are going to be introduced in the second season to be, like, one of the biggest features of the, the 2012 toy collection. Like, right. like uh, Neutralizer was a big one. Yeah. A lot of people looking forward to that, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Casey Jones. We got some information about Casey Jones. Really? Yes. It showed on the trailer of what Casey Jones is going to look like. We already know that he's going to be voiced by Josh Peck. We finally got a good glimpse of what he looks like. It's sort of like Donnie in which he actually has, like, a gap in the middle of his teeth. And he has, you know, the classic baseball bat and hockey mask and hockey stick. And he's, you know, like, he has, like, the little kind of, like, moped or motorcycle or scooter or something like that. And April, you know, she gets rescued by him. And he starts going to the same school as April. And Well, actually, they said that he was going to be a dropout. Oh, okay. Maybe he is. See, I got to say, I really like this Casey Jones um, it's going to be an interesting take because Casey apparently hates mutants. So I wonder how that's going to uh, turn over with April and how it's going to turn out with the Turtles' relationship. Um, in, in the, in the um, Casey Jones Revealed, they show him fighting off Mutant Man. And I'm going to take it that, that they're going to have an episode... That when Mutagen Man returns in season two, it's going to have Mutagen Man and Casey Jones. That's when Casey Jones is going to appear. Um, I like Casey Jones. I like this new incarnation. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting take. 
he's kind of a blend of the 1980s with Pat Fraley, where he sort of gave him a Clint Eastwood. Not that saying that well, he's going to be voiced by Josh Peck, by the way, who voiced um, Drake and Josh. Um, Peck sort of gave him like the sort of the same voice, but not like Clint Eastwood. Sort of like lowered his voice, sort of like this, and sort of like he talks like you know, like I don't like mutants, I hate mutants. Like sort of like lowered his voice and tone. Um, and he wears his trademark hockey mask. So, I mean, I'm happy about that. In the 2003 series, it was interesting only because, you know, they gave him a Brooklyn accent. And I think that's what he's intended to have, like the 1990 movie. But this one, he doesn't have a Brooklyn accent at all. This one, he was, he's more of a very dark, like, like, you know, I'm going to kick some ass. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we can say right before we conclude? Yes. Patty, if you don't want wash your hair, you're going to get the bugs to come out. No, I'm joking. I love Patty. No, anyway, listen, guys, we have a very special guest coming up. We can't reveal who it is. Um, you know, we're going to do another Turtle Talk very soon, too. Um, you know, um, about uh, the mo- uh, We're going to do a special Turtle Talk about the movies, all, f- all five movies, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, some Secret Reviews, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time, and TMNT, and Turtles Forever. And uh, that's about it. So, Patty, let's conclude it. All right. Well, um, we'll definitely uh, catch you in the next one. Take care.